Okay everyone, today we're going to be seeing what happens if you put concrete in a vacuum chamber. So the reason that I'm doing this video is because I've had a ton of requests to do it. Apparently there are several videos circulating online with the question, what would happen to Earth if oxygen disappeared for five seconds? And in all of these videos, they always mention that if oxygen disappeared from the Earth for five seconds, all concrete structures would just tumble to the ground because they rely on oxygen to stay rigid. So I've had a lot of people asking me saying, does that mean that if we put concrete in a vacuum chamber, it'll just turn to dust? Well, today we're going to find out. So I'm gonna put concrete in the vacuum chamber and see what happens to it. And then after that test, I'll do one more test in the vacuum chamber and see if you actually need air in order for concrete to solidify. So what happens if we have wet concrete and try to let it dry in the vacuum chamber? Will it dry or not? Okay, so I have a concrete brick here. So before I put this concrete in, let's clarify the difference between concrete and cement. So you use cement to make concrete. Basically you mix cement with sand and that makes concrete. So usually when we just speak, we interchange concrete and cement, but they're actually different things. So I'm using concrete, which is a mixture of cement and sand or some other aggregate. Okay, now is your time to take your guess. What do you think is going to happen? Is this concrete block just going to tumble into dust or is it just gonna stay just like it is or what's going to happen here? So I want you to comment in the comment section with what you think is going to happen and how sure you are it's going to happen. I know I have my guesses. Okay, solid concrete in a vacuum chamber. Will it crumble to dust? Three, two, one. Okay, we're decreasing pressure fast. We're at a half an atmosphere now. A third of an atmosphere. How's it looking? Doesn't look like much is happening. Let's get to full vacuum and see what's going on here. Okay, we're almost to a full vacuum now. Let's give it a few more minutes. Any cracks forming? Let's see. Okay, we're now at a full vacuum, as much a vacuum as my vacuum pump can pull now. And it looks pretty solid to me. <laughs> Definitely did not turn to dust. Okay, let's let the air back in and check it out. Looks as strong as can be. Solid concrete still, no dust whatsoever. In fact, it has completely no effect on the concrete. Okay, now let's see what happens trying to dry wet concrete in the vacuum chamber. Does concrete actually need air to dry? Okay, here's our concrete mixture. Mix in some water. Okay, so this is a quick set concrete. It should be starting to get hard and set in about 40 minutes. So one thing that I noticed right away is that this concrete is now warm. So neither of the ingredients that I put into it were warm. So that means that there's a chemical reaction taking place. And that chemical reaction is called hydration. Okay, so I'm gonna put one of these in the vacuum chamber and one of them outside the vacuum chamber and we'll leave them there to let them set and afterwards we'll check and compare their properties. See if one of them is harder than the other one or one of them stayed completely wet and never dried. Let's see what happens. Okay, wet concrete in the vacuum chamber. Three, two, one. 
Okay, here we go. Half an atmosphere. So it doesn't look like much is happening to the wet concrete in there. Don't see any water boiling off of it or anything. Okay, so I've got my two samples now, so I'm gonna let this one set and come back and compare to the one in the vacuum chamber. So you can see that the cement didn't really do anything in the vacuum chamber. So why is it that all of these videos mention that if we were to lose oxygen from the atmosphere, that all of these concrete structures would just crumble to the ground? Well, those videos are actually a little bit misleading because they're actually mixing together oxygen, oxygen gas, and oxygen found within other molecules. Now obviously these two are extremely different and this is where the confusion comes in with concrete structures crumbling if you remove oxygen. So the cement that holds concrete together has a lot of different components in it but the main component is called tricalcium silicate. It's about 55 percent of Portland cement and this is what a molecule of tricalcium silicate looks like. It's made of calcium, silicon, and oxygen atoms. But because this is such a big name to write, a lot of concrete engineers actually use an abbreviated form of this. They actually write it as C3S. So if you're a chemist, this is kind of confusing because this looks like some weird molecule of three carbons and a sulfur atom. But this is actually just shorthand for this tricalcium silicate here. Now this tricalcium silicate reacts with water and it's called hydration. And the chemical reaction when it reacts with water is this. So as soon as you add water to cement, it rapidly reacts with the water to release these calcium atoms and these hydroxide ions here. So the pH quickly rises to above 12 as soon as you add water to cement. And this reaction also produces heat. So this calcium silica and calcium hydroxide both begin to crystallize and harden. So as these crystals grow through the cement, it actually makes it harder for the uh, water to react with the tricalcium silica, and so it kind of slows the reaction down. So the initial reaction is really fast, but then after a while it slows down considerably because this water can't get to it very well. So for example, you have your initial ball of cement here and the water's around it and the water reacts with it and kind of forms this coating around it of this calcium hydroxide and calcium silicate and it crystallizes around it and so it makes it harder for more water to get into it. So that's why cement can take so long to cure because that water has to diffuse all the way through this crystal layer here to get into the uh, cement ball inside of it. So you can see that in this reaction here, I didn't mention a gaseous oxygen molecule at all. So that means that this reaction doesn't depend at all on air, just water. So technically those videos were correct because if you remove the oxygen atoms from all of these molecules, of course it wouldn't hold together. In fact, there'd be a lot of stuff wrong with that if you just suddenly plucked out all of the oxygen atoms. But I think where a lot of people got confused is they assumed that they were talking about molecular oxygen atoms, like the gas oxygen that we breathe. They assumed that that is what that video was talking about. But really they were talking about all oxygen atoms even within molecules. Okay, so it's been a few hours now. So this is quick setting cement. So it should set pretty quickly. It's definitely not full strength yet, but it should be good enough to compare the two. So let's compare our cement drying in air versus in a vacuum chamber. Let's let the air back in. Three, two, one. So let's see about how hard they are. So let's try to break the one in vacuum in half. Pretty easy at this point. The one in air, also pretty easy. Now it looks like there's not too big of a difference here. 
The color is slightly different. This one is a little bit lighter color than the one that was in the vacuum chamber. So you can see that being in the vacuum versus being in air didn't really change any properties of the curing of the cement here. So it looks like whether we have an already dried slab of concrete or whether or not we try to dry it in a vacuum or air, it doesn't really matter. It's going to dry either way or set either way whether or not there's oxygen or air around it. Okay, so this is actually good news. This means that we can actually use concrete structures in space. The only thing of being in a vacuum chamber that could affect the cement is it evaporates more water from it. So technically, if you have the exact correct amount of water for the cement, and you put it in a vacuum chamber and try to let it react in there, some of the water is going to evaporate before it has a chance to react. So you might end up with a more crumbly cement overall. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest videos out. And if you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comment section and I'll try to get to them. And head over to theactionlab.com to check out the subscription box if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.